Hi, this is Adam Koo, and welcome to this lesson on low risk, high profit swing trading. To be a successful trader, the first thing is to begin with the right mindset or the right psychology. One of the reasons why new traders fail is because of unrealistic or wrong expectations. Let me give you an example. For example, many newbie traders have the wrong belief that successful traders have a secret strategy or secret indicator that can predict where the price is going to go. So when this moving average crossover, when there's this indicator that tells you it's bullish, the price will go up. And when they use that indicator or they use that strategy, and when the price doesn't go according to expectations, they say the strategy doesn't work. This indicator doesn't work. So they go around in circles looking for that magical indicator. The reality is that successful traders cannot predict where the price is going to go on any given trade with certainty. All they can do is to identify high probability trade setups, which tell them that the price is more likely to go up or more likely to go down. So what this means is that in a sample of, for example, 20 trades, successful traders know you're going to be right more than they're wrong, but they can't be right on every single trade. Now, the second myth that people have, which is related to the first myth, is that successful traders have high win rates. That to be a successful trader, you're gonna be right at least 70%, 80%, 90%, or even 100% of the time. That's not the reality. The reality is that the most successful traders in the world are only right half the time, or slightly more than half the time. And that's all you need to build a fortune. Why? Because if you make more when you're right, and lose less when you are wrong, even if you're right half the time, you can make a great income, build your wealth, trading the stock market. So for example, on a given month, you take an average of 20 high probability trades. And again, that doesn't mean that you win every single trade. If you can win more than half, that's a pretty good statistic. But let's take just 50% win rate. At a 50% win rate, you expect 10 winning trades and 10 losing trades. But the most important thing is to ensure that you lose less when you're wrong and make more when you're right. So successful traders always place a stop loss to ensure that when they're wrong, they only lose a small percentage of their capital. So in this case, we set it at a 1% risk whenever you lose. And we set a profit target that is double our initial risk. So when we have a winning trade, we win double of our risk, which in this case would be 2%. So in this case, what happens? When you have a losing trade, you lose 1% of your capital times 10, that's a 10% from your losing trades. The winning trade, you're winning 2% of your capital times 10, that's 20%. So 20% from your winning trades minus 10% from your losing trades gives you a net profit or net return of 10% return a month. Now again, most newbie traders have the wrong expectations or the unrealistic belief that successful traders make 50% or 100% return a month or a day. Now the people who do that, they're not trading, they're gambling. And more often than not, they're gonna lose everything the next month because it is not sustainable. To create a sustainable source of income, you wanna get a reasonable rate of return every month that you can do consistently. But I can tell you that even at a 10% return a month, if you do it consistently, it can really build your capital to a huge amount over time. Take a look at this. So if you start with, for example, $5,000 and you get a 10% return a month, in 12 months or in one year, your $5,000 would grow to $15,600. That's a 214% return a year in one year. And if you can do that for five years consecutively, that $5,000 after five years grows to $1.5 million. And that's only having to be right half the time and having, to, having the discipline to cut loss when you're losing 1% of your capital and to take profit when you're making 2% return on your capital. All right, so let's take a look at swing trading in action. So the first step is to identify a high probability trade setup based on a particular strategy. So the trade setup could be a long setup where you go long on a stock, which means you buy high and you sell higher, or you go short on a stock, which means you sell high and you buy lower. So one of the strategies that I use is known as the slingshot strategy. 
So this involves buying stocks when they are oversold at a support level or going short on stocks that are overbought at a resistance level. So I use a proprietary scanner that my students get as well in the uh, Piranha Profit stock trading course. So here's how it works. So over here, I put in uh, my scanner. So I'm looking for a slingshot um, short setup. So it will scan the market for stocks that are having that criteria and there are quite a number of them. So I've identified one that has a high probability, which is RARE. So I click on that and you can see this chart appears over here. Now we have our private um, chat group as well on Telegram. This is our stock trading chat group where I post trade setups and my students post trade setups daily whenever we find a good one. So for example, this was posted by me uh, on again RARE, which is a slingshot double top setup. So let me explain why is this a high probability short setup where, where we anticipate that the price is likely to go down. Again, it's not a prediction of certainty, it's just a probability and that's all we need. So over here you can see that the price in this setup is overbought because the price is hitting the upper Bollinger Bands. At the same time, if you look at the stochastics, it is also above 80, so it's overbought and it's beginning to trend down. So we have got overbought conditions on both Bollinger Bands and stochastics. At the same time, you can see that it's hitting a strong level of resistance and this is what is known as a double top pattern. Now, not only that, but you also have a bullish engulfing pattern. So when you have got many, many points of conflicts, resistance, overbought, bearish candlestick pattern, there's a likelihood that, okay, the price is going to go down. So we're going to go short on this stock, which means we're going to sell and buy it back at a lower price, hopefully. The next step is to identify your entry price, your stop loss, and your profit target. So where would I enter this trade? I'll only enter the trade if when the market opens, the price goes below the low of this candle by about three cents. So the low of this candle is $60.40, 60 40. Uh, so I'm gonna put an entry price at about 60.37, three cents below that. So roughly I'm gonna put uh, a line here to roughly identify okay so it says 6036 and that's fine as well so i'm gonna enter at 6036 uh, using a sell stop limit order right so we're gonna sell at 636 using a stop limit order there we go all right so once i enter at 6 6036 uh, i believe it's going to go down and i'm going to take profit somewhere over here it's gonna be my profit target. But remember, in every trade, you never know which will be a winning trade, which will be a losing trade, because we can't predict the price movement on any one trade. So if I'm wrong on this trade and it goes up, what happens? That's right, I have to cut my losses. I have to minimize my loss. So where would I put my stop loss? I'll place my stop loss just above the high of this candle, which is above the swing high. And the high is about 64.24, so I can add three cents, that'd be 64.27. So let me shift that up roughly to 64, that's right, 27, okay. So my stop loss, SL, 64.27. Okay, so once you've identified your entry price and your stop loss, you, that you can then calculate what is your risk per share. So for every share you buy, or for every share I buy, how much am I risking, right? So my risk would be 64.27 minus 60.36, and that is $3.90, 390. So 390 is my risk per share, because that's how much I'm gonna lose per share if it hits my stop loss. Now, this is also known as my 1R distance. R represents risk, okay? So if I'm risking 1R, I want to make at least 2R, okay? So 
if 1R is 390, what is 2R? 390 times 2. That would be roughly 780. So 2R would be 780. There we go. So again, what this means is uh, my potential loss per share, if it's a losing trade, is 390. My potential profit per share is 780. So where do I put my profit target or my TP? So my profit target would be $60.36 minus 780. And that would be, uh, let's see, 60.36 minus 7. Okay, that'll be 52.57. There we go. So once you've determined your entry price, your stop loss and profit target, next thing is to determine the number of shares to trade. And this is all determined by your trading capital and your risk per trade. So let's imagine you've got a trading capital of $5,000 in your account, and you decide to risk a maximum of 3% risk per trade. So how many shares do you trade? So this is a simple formula, okay? The number of shares for you to trade would be equal to your risk per trade, which in this case is 3%, multiply that by your trading capital, which is $5,000. Okay, so what's 3% multiplied by 5,000? The answer is $150. So, this means that the maximum that you can lose in a trade is $150. That's the maximum risk, the total risk. But each share you trade, you're risking $390. Remember that. So you take the total risk, $150, divided by the risk per share of $390. What do you get? Right? So, three, so $150 divided by $390, you get 38 shares. So there you go. So this is the number of shares to trade for this particular account. So if this turns out to be a losing trade, you would lose 390 times 38 shares, correct? Which means you would lose a total of $150 if it's a losing trade. Now if this turns out to be a winning trade, you would win 38 shares multiplied by 780 and that would be $300. All right, and again, bear in mind that $150 represents 3% of your capital, which you would lose if it's a losing trade. And $300 would represent 6% of your uh, trading capital. So again, you're risking 1R to make 2R. Now, there are many ways to take this trade. The first way is to simply sell short the stock itself directly. Now, the only risk with that is when you sell short a stock and you place a stop loss and the price gaps above the stop loss, you could lose more than what you intend. A stop loss can't save you if the price goes beyond that stop loss. So a safer way to trade the stock is by using options. So once you've identified your target, there are many ways to kill your target. You can use a rifle or you can use a rifle plus a silencer and a grenade launcher. So, in, so using options, you're basically using an extra accessory to improve your success rates of trading. At the same time, options allow you to increase your risk to return ratios. And I'm going to give you an example of how I use options in this example. So first of all, uh, I'm going to go over to my broker. One of my brokers I'm using is Think or Swim. And we're going to open the charts on Think or Swim. Um, so over here, we have got the exact same trade, which is RARE. And we identified earlier our different uh, levels, right? So let's put that in. So first of all, um, our entry price um, was... 60.36, right? So 60.36, uh, roughly about there, okay? Our stop loss, uh, 64.27, somewhere about, roughly about there, okay? Uh, our profit target at 50.25, somewhere about, sorry, 52, um, 52.57, about, roughly about that, 
Okay, so once again, that's our entry where we're gonna sell, go short, that's our stop loss, and that's our profit target. So we saw earlier that if you sell the shares directly, you're risking one R to make two R, right? $150 risk to make $300 profit. Now let's see what happens if we use put options instead. So I'm gonna use what is known as a put option spread, where I'm gonna buy a put at the current price of $60, and I'm gonna simultaneously sell a put at $50. Now why not 52? Why 50? Because there's no 52 strike price. So I have only have a 60 strike and a 50 strike. So again, I repeat, I'm gonna buy a put option at the 60 strike price and at the same time sell another put option at the 50 strike price. We call this a put spread. Now why do I sell a put? When I sell a put, I collect premium that will help me to finance the cost of buying the 60 put. Okay. Now, uh, if you're not clear about how to use options, you can check out my videos on the introduction to options trading, right? They're all on YouTube. Just type Admiral options. You can watch all the option videos to understand the basics. But I'm going to show you right now how I would set up the trade. So what, what I would then do is I'm going to go to my trade tab over here and I'm going to select the uh, date to expiry. So I'm going to give myself 34 days. Uh, to be right on the trade, about a month, all right? Of course, you could hit that way before a month. And so I'm taking the 20th March expiry and I'm looking at the put options. I use put options when I'm gonna go short. I use call options when I'm gonna go long, all right? So first I select the 60 strike and the uh, 50 strike. So I'm going to go to the 60 strike and I'm going to right click buy a vertical spread. There we have it. Okay. So there we are. We've got the 60 here and we have got the 50 over there. So I'm going to buy a put at the 60 strike and sell a put at the 50 strike. So how much is this going to cost me? So the cost of the trade, you can see is $175. Because one contract is 100 shares. So you multiply by 100, is $175 of maximum risk. So in when you trade options, the maximum risk is the cost you pay for the trade. So again, my maximum risk is 175. Now, if I'm right and it goes all the way down, what's my maximum profit? If I click the send button over here, it will show me. If it goes all the way down to $50, right, my maximum profit and maximum loss. So maximum loss is $175, maximum profit is $825. So you can see it massively increases my uh, potential profit. But again, we're not even waiting for it to go to 50 we're going to take profit at 52 dollars and uh 57 cents so let's take a look at the risk to return profile of this trade there we go so over here what we have is we have got the profit and loss graph okay on the y-axis you can see this is zero Anything above that is profit. So there's a $500 profit, there's a $1,000 profit. Anything below that is a loss. So that's a $500 loss and so on and so forth. So the y-axis is the profit and loss. Profit and loss. On the x-axis, we have got the share price. So currently the share price is the center line, which is currently at $61.13, all right? So when I take this trade, I anticipate the price is going to go down to $52.57. Right, so let me just roughly put it to $52.57. Yeah, that box. $52.57. Okay, so if the price goes down, what's my profit at expiration? So the green line is the 
profit at expiration, which would be roughly about, um, let me just take a look at that, It'd be roughly about $568. There we go. Okay, now if the price goes up instead of going down, all right, again, what's the maximum I would lose? The maximum I would lose would be this green line over here, which would be again $175. There we go. So this time, what happens? I'm risking $175 to make $568. But if I shorted the stock itself, I would risk $150 to make $300, right? One is to two. But in this case, I'm risking $175 to make $568. That gives me a risk to return ratio of one is to three. So you can see that by using options, what happens? It increases my risk to return ratio. And in the event that a stock gaps up above the stop loss, I will never lose more than 175. That's the maximum I can ever lose. Now in reality, when I place an option trade, I will never allow it to lose the maximum. I will never allow myself to lose 175. I'll only lose 175 if the options expire. I will not allow it to expire. If I notice the price is going in the opposite direction, going up, I would cut my loss early so that I've got time value left in my option, which means I'll usually cut loss at 50% of the maximum loss. So 50% of 175 is roughly about $90, which means in actual fact, I'm risking $90 to make 568 and that's risking a dollar to make six dollars now if i do that consistently over a large sample of trades even if i'm right half the time i'll make a fortune because when i'm wrong i'm losing a dollar when i'm right i'm making six dollars do that consistently that's how you can compound your capital to exponential amounts so i do hope that you have enjoyed this lesson on swing trading and how you can incorporate options to maximize returns and minimize risk. If you'd like to find out more, do check out piranaprofits.com where we have got our professional stock trading, options trading, forex trading, and stock investing courses that you can take. Or check out my free videos on YouTube as well. Subscribe for the latest videos. So with that, this is Adam Koo. May the markets be with you. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. So if you want to be the first to get my next video on YouTube, do click the subscribe button right now. If you want to check out my online courses, go on to piranaprofits.com where you can enroll in our professional forex, stock trading, options trading, and value momentum investing courses where you're going to learn how to trade like a professional and generate an income anywhere in the world. If you would like to come to Singapore to attend my live classes, Wealth Academy, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com. It's Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.